Hey guys, it's Bang for About PC Gamer here, and this is my review for the Intel i7 5960X. I've had this CPU for about seven days now, so I thought I'd give you guys my thoughts and my opinion on it. But before that, I'll quickly go through the other bits of hardware that I'm using with this system. So, for the graphics card, I'm using an, an NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti reference design from Inno 3D. For the motherboard, I'm using the MSI X99A Gaming 7. To cool the CPU, I'm using the Corsair H110i GT. And for the power supply, I'm using the Corsair HX1000i, which also will allow me to give you guys some power consumption numbers as well. So, um, this is currently the flagship Intel processor for the desktop platform and it has 8 cores, 16 threads and 20 megabytes of level 3 cache absolute beast and I'm going to jump straight into the review I have decided to break this review up into a few sections so I want to start off by showing you guys some benchmarks to give you guys some performance numbers that you're familiar with then I'll move on to some game performance and I'll be comparing that from stock to an overclock of 4.5 gigahertz to see if there's any performance difference and then I'll move on to some power consumption numbers and um, I'll do that from stock to overclock as well so you can get an idea of what kind of um, wattage you're going to be pulling from an overclocked and a stock 5960X before that I'll quickly go through some basic settings with you so I'm using the GTX 980 Ti with drivers 364.72 with a 1200 MHz overclock on the core and a 1953 MHz overclock on the memory I currently have the Intel i7-5960X at 4.5 GHz with a voltage of 1.281. Memory is running a frequency of 2,666 MHz and I've got 32 GB of Corsair Vengeance LPX um, DDR4. So that's pretty much it. What I'll do now is jump into my BIOS and quickly give you a walk around of what settings I use to achieve the 4.5 GHz overclock and then I'll move on to the benchmarks okay guys this is my BIOS um, I do apologize for the shaky camera I'm trying to hold my iPhone 5S with one hand and navigate through the other so I'm going to go into my overclock settings now and uh, give you a quick um, look at the settings I use so I left the multiplier which is the CPU ratio at 45 which gives you 4.5 gigahertz I left that at fixed mode as well you can have it at dynamic but that enables features like Intel speed step and Intel turbo boost which you know fluctuates the core speed so um, I found that um, results are more consistent when you have a fixed core speed now the ring ratio I left at auto which generally leaves it at 3000 which is what the on core will be running at as well base clock I left at 100 I didn't mess around with that my memory speed as I said is 2666 megahertz when it came to the core voltage I've got a voltage of 1.280 which is quite moderate um, for the actual speed um, so that's a pretty good chip and that's pretty much it everything else has been left to auto when in CPU features I've got all the power saving options disabled as well so um, Intel C state I've got disabled which will um, enable some kind of power saving option so all of the power saving options I've disabled for maximum stability and that's pretty much it I've left the motherboard at auto which does a great job of pretty much doing everything else and giving you a stable overclock okay now moving on to Cinebench 11.5 wanna run the CPU benchmark So at 4.5 GHz, the Intel i7-5960X gets a CPU score of 19.20. With the latest version of Cinebench R15, I get a score of 1731.
looking at the results on the 3D Mark Fire Strike benchmark, don't worry too much about the graphics score, it's really about the physics score, what's really testing the CPU and I've got a score of 21,483 on the physics score which is really really high and on the combined score I've got a score of 9,054 so um, you can obviously run this benchmark yourself and compare that to what you get. So looking at the final overall score, I got a score of 21,546. So moving my focus over to power consumption now, this is the HX1000i with the Corsair Link software as you can see at idle at 4.5 GHz you will be averaging around 150 watts power consumption and um, it's boosted up to 204 watts now because I've started recording. This is where the spike in power went up as soon as I hit the record button but generally at idle you will be pulling 150 watts from the wall. So the same again this time but this time with stock settings as you can see power consumption was around 100 watts um, it's only jumped up to 160 since recording as you can see the spike in performance since hitting the record button. So what I'm going to do now is run um, a rendering software called Cyberlink Power Director 14 and I'm going to render a 4K video and this should push the CPU all the way up to 100% usage so what I'll do is observe the power consumption which you'll see here and also you can also observe the CPU temperature here and the CPU load so what I'm going to do is uh, put a timer up so I can measure the difference in performance as well and I'll start the recording Okay guys, so looking at the difference between the two CPUs from stock to 4.5 GHz, you can see there's a tremendous difference in 
heat, first of all. The stock CPU is running at 45 to 42 degrees Celsius, whereas the overclock CPU is running between 72 and 78 Celsius. And when you look at the power consumption, the stock CPU is only using under 250 watts and the overclock CPU is using just under 400, so there's a massive difference in power consumption there. Another thing I want to note as well is if you have a look at the actual voltage what the CPU core is required to maintain its base clock of 3 GHz, you can see it's using 0.918 volts, that's under 1 volt, which is pretty staggering, I didn't expect that. Um, overclocked you have to use 1.280, so over almost 3 volts extra to maintain that 4.5 GHz overclock. So massive difference in um, heat and power consumption but there's also a massive difference in performance now there is actually a one minute 47 seconds difference between running the CPU at stock and overclock to render this four minute um, 4k video so obviously for something that is like an hour and a half long like a feature length film then that's going to be a massive difference in rendering time so that's definitely something to consider and it's definitely worth overclocking the CPU. So that pretty much brings me to the end of the video and I guess we can talk about the elephant in the room that I've been avoiding and that is the price. It is um, a staggering amount of money you do have to pay for the Intel i7-5960X in the UK. You can get it for £875 for the retail box which comes with um, the box and the cooler and you get it for about 850 for the OEM, which is just a chip itself, so still a lot of money to pay. Now, um, what do I think about the CPU? I think the performance is second to none. Um, it's definitely not a gaming CPU, as um, I would say you would get the best performance with going with a quad-core Skylake, but at the end of the day, it's still very, very capable of pushing some of the highest-end um, graphics cards. Um, so it's definitely gonna do gaming with no problem at all but when it comes to content creation and rendering it just cuts through videos like nothing I've ever seen and I've owned the 5930k which I wasn't 100% impressed with over my 4790k but this 5960x when it comes to rendering is a different beast it just cuts through um, 4k videos like effortlessly and um, I have to say I'm very very impressed with it on on that kind of performance that it gives. Obviously the Intel with the price I think they could be a bit more reasonable but because of the competition not being able to compete they can pretty much charge what they want at the moment. I would have liked to see the CPU at more of the £650 mark but you do get 8 cores and 16 threads, um, quad channel DDR4 support and you also get um, basically the Halo platform at the moment for gaming and content creation so as we all know when it comes to PC hardware if you want the best day you damn sure have to pay for it another thing I do like is just looking at those 16 cores in your task manager you know you're pretty much ready for anything that your any application you have installed will you will fry it it you will deal with it so um, I don't like to use the word future proof because you never know what's around the corner but you can definitely feel confident in that your CPU is ready for the challenge. Anyway guys that's pretty much it for me. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video and as always thanks for watching.